For a long time, sequels were considered a bad idea. But now we live in a world of sequels, prequels, reboots, remakes, and other shenanigans. And some of them are so damn good, they might even surpass their originals. So, here's four good films, but were the sequels better? I wonder. 28 Days Later was a thrilling and intense look into a possible viral infection as a commentary on the dangers of viral research. Of course, this idea of a pandemic infection is sadly more relevant than ever in our current situation. A few years later, we got a sequel to this Danny Boyle classic. We got 28 Weeks Later, a film devoid of any artistic cinematography. Its plot is coincidental, unbelievable trash, and they turned the villains of the story, the rage-infected humans, that's right, normal humans, into basically zombies that bite people which never happened in the first movie. Shameless cash grab. And as far as any social commentary, there really didn't seem to be any. It's just a subpar film. Although the first 15 minutes of the film are genuinely scary because there's real tension set up, and it made me think, well, maybe this movie won't be so bad. Oh, they're biting people, that never happened. I guess another positive would be that Robert Carlyle, who plays the dad in 28 Weeks Later, is a real bastard, just like he was in the other Danny Boyle movie he was in, Trainspotting. Robert Carlyle, what a bastard. So, is this hollow sequel better than the original? <laughs> F no, it sucks ass. James Cameron created Terminator in 1984. Two years later, he went on to do the sequel to Alien, Aliens. He must have got some confidence from that because he wanted to outdo himself. So in 1991, he made Terminator 2, Judgment Day. And holy shit. Sarah Connor was a badass now. Arnold was full action hero, not the last. Robert Patrick was a cold new villain, and everything was kicked up to 11. The special effects were top notch. Hell, people didn't even know if Arnold was the good guy in this one. All we know is that when we saw Arnold walk out of that bar with the full leather outfit and the shotgun and the sunglasses to bad to the bone, we knew shit was on. So. While the original Terminator is undoubtedly a classic film, Terminator 2 is just something to witness. Sarah Connor's nuclear dream alone has enough weight to it to make you realize that these people and this machine have to fight for the future of mankind. This is one of the best movies ever made. Period. So is it better? F yes. It is. And now a third entry that everyone can enjoy. Let's see if I did there. Yeah. Aliens. This is really comparing two movies that are actually so different from each other. I could go on and on about how awesome Aliens really is. I mean, the characters are fantastic, special effects and action, again, top notch, through the roof, very visceral. It is a roller coaster ride with some slowed down human moments to give it some heart. But again, it is very different from Alien in terms of the pace, the themes, and the characters. Yet it still feels like a natural escalation of having a universe in which these creatures exist and then multiply. It's set 57 years after the events of Alien. Ellen Ripley awakes from her hypersleep, and now she must help a team of absolute badasses investigate the colony established on the planet LV-426, the original planet where her crew found the eggs from Alien. It's like returning to a nightmare. Imagine having a traumatizing event, and then you go back to that traumatizing event, but way worse with a lot more shit going down, and a lot more people getting horribly killed. So, to me, this one's a tie. Each film has such strong points, 
that unless you prefer either horror or action more, it's really hard just to choose one. So yeah, this one is a tie. Both films are awesome. Last but not least, National Lampoon's Vacation. Vacation is a classic comedy that's still funny as hell. Christmas Vacation was also funny, but in my opinion, nowhere near as good as Vacation. So you already know the answer, I guess you could just end the video here. But please don't. Yes, Christmas Vacation is probably higher on the relatability scale. I'm sure most people have had that Christmas dinner or any, you know, family get-together where everything just goes wrong. Or it's annoying as shit. <laughs> Lord knows I have. But to me, that relatability can only go so far. Whereas the original Vacation has everything you could want from a comedy including relatable situations. I guess it comes down to what kind of humor you prefer. I like the blend of down-to-earth comedy bits along with bits of insanity. I guess the best way to describe it would be like season 5 of The Simpsons, aka the best season ever. So yeah, National Lampoon's Vacation, the OG is still the best in my book. I mean, it's got the scene where they go to the hood, it's got the scene where they track the dog behind, which is all kinds of horrible, but it's hilarious. You get to see Randy Quaid's character for the first time. You get John Candy as the security guard at Wally World. It has such a triumphant ending where they finally get what they want after all this struggle. It really feels like they earned it. And of course, you got Beverly D'Angelo's chesticles. So, Christmas Vacation didn't have that. Well, there you have it. Do you agree? Do you disagree? I don't care. Because as Troy McClure said to Dolores Montenegro and Golly All Quakers, have it your way, baby!